<laughs> Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. I'm Sarah Veslov. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do tech good. good. Ah, we're doing tech good here at DevFest Florida 2019. Where are we at, Brian? We're in Orlando, Florida at so it's either the Oviedo or the Oviedo Mall. I'm not sure. <laughs> we're at the mall, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing tech here with Jen Tong. Hello. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the show. Appreciate Thank you me. joining us. Happy to be on. Yeah. So Jen, for our audience, you mind telling us a little bit about um, who you are, what you do? Sure. So by day, I'm a developer advocate at Google with a little bit of a focus on cloud security stuff. Ooh, what does that mean? Uh, walk us through your day to day. Like, what kind of what kind of things do you do with cloud security stuff? So, I spend part of my time back at headquarters, kind of doing research on either like new and interesting products for keeping stuff secure on cloud platform. Okay. And helping our product team make our the rest of our cloud features uh, more security, easier to do secure things on. So, for example, if you deploy software to one of our platforms, I want to make sure that it makes secure decisions by default. So you don't have to go back and clean stuff up later. Oh, okay. Save you some of that burden. And then I also spend part of my time coming out to events like this and giving talks and doing educational workshops on web security stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, talk. Man, I was, I was ready. Oh, okay. I think it's just going to try to throw to me like that. Sorry. So yeah. what you talk about today? So today I talked about web authentication, which is an internet protocol for more secure user authentication. Mm. And so you already gave that talk earlier today. I gave that talk earlier today. How do you think it went? It went great. It's a talk I've given before. So this okay. is, this is Easy. many generations of refinements, <laughs> uh, but it was a really good audience. People had some really good questions. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, so what, what does the talk mean? Like, I, I, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but what does that mean? So web authentication is a technology that you can use to either supplement or replace like login and password style authentication. And it uses hardware-backed cryptographic user uh, auth during the authentication flow, Say which <laughs> hardware-backed uh, cryptographically secure user authentication, which means is you have a little USB dongle, you hit a button on it during the login process, and then it protects you against attacks like oh. credential stuffing from password reuse. It protects you against phishing. So if you're being phished and you hit the button, it will tell you you're being fished. Oh, nice. uh, protects against yeah. a bunch of other security things that happen during authentication. Is that the Titan or is that something else? Yes, Titan implements is part of the web authentication okay. protocol, but it's a it's an internet standard. So you could go buy your key, like an open source key from a project called Solo and uh, oh, Yubico yes, makes so a bunch of other web authentication capable keys. Sweet. Yeah, but I, I was- I've been so unsafe all this time now. You have been. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need your own key. We've all been. Yeah. So what, what's the scenario for this? What, what, why, why is this a thing? Why, what, what, where, where, and when would I need this? So the people in like the reason I'm at a dev fest talking yeah. to people about it is because software developers are starting to get targeted specifically yeah. because we do things like have access to Android app signing keys, or we might have administrative access mm -hmm. on a cloud console for AWS or Google cloud platform or we might have an open source library that other people depend upon. Yeah. So people target us specifically. So I'm trying to convince more software developers and IT administrators to start using this for themselves. And then as a secondary goal, I'm trying to drive overall adoption of the technology so that everybody uses it without knowing what that jargon means. Uh, and that requires people to add support to their software. So how do you uh, convince people with by educating them on this, like where, 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 what does that track look like? Like, how do you? Well, let me tell you Prince something. That, yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 that's what I'm getting at. Like, like, do you start with like a, the fear thing, or like, how do you? I try and get away from the fear fear mongering type type yeah. of talks, but um, it depends on the audience. Sure. So for software developers, I just help help tell, show them how much easier it'll make their life. You know, if this event happens, it's going to be a lot easier. It'll prevent it. Mm -hmm. um, adding support to your software will reduce the number of support calls you get from users that have had their accounts taken over. Positive. Yeah, yeah. positive. Yeah, there we go. Spin on that. Yeah. 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 That's much see, better. I was, yeah. I was wondering about like, is it more like scare you, scare you, scare you, or like? I try not to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's, it's well, more, more horrible things, things that, that happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I spend a lot of time going to security conferences and like a lot of those security conferences are like one oh, scare yeah. talk after another. And after about yeah. three of those, like you forget what you're scared of. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm curious, one thing I'd like to ask is uh, the time it took in, for you to make this talk and uh, you know how many times you, rever you rehearsed it and um, if you could give us like a little behind the scenes of that. Well, what sure, like. on kind of lecture planning. So I yeah. do, I also do, I teach university classes and stuff like this. So the, for, for a conference talk though, it's about you get enough opportunity to kind of introduce somebody to a topic. Yeah and hopefully get them to do some additional research on it. So you're kind of uh, just trying to do a hook yes. instead of like the format you do from like an all-day workshop or like a semester-long university course. We can actually teach people stuff. Yeah. So for that, I spent a lot of time working on kind of the narrative flow mm -hmm. um, and figuring out how to get people to pay attention long enough to, in this case, for web authentication, my goals are to Put in enough jokes to keep people's attention. <laughs> yeah, a little bit jokes. of the stand-up comedy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And during that time, I try and convince them this is a technology that actually solves a problem. Yeah. It's like, this will work. This will solve the problem I say it will solve. And then give them the resources to do research after that. And in terms of developing that, I, I tend to find audiences that will let me beta test my talks. <laughs> so I've been talking about this set of technologies for, for several years now. And my early talks were rougher to smaller audiences. Yeah. Uh, you know, go find some coworkers to bounce it off and go find local meetups. And then once it gets more mature, then I can start going to, you know, coming coming on to larger events like this. So this talk that you're, you did, did here it is a, a like years in the making, essentially almost. I guess so. There's certain things like this is something that like two or three years ago I found while doing web app, like, like general web application security research, yeah. I discovered this technology which isn't really web application security, but it's like such a low hanging fruit on the mm -hmm. internet. It's like, okay, I got to tell people about this. So yeah, it's slowly been shaping into this. Right, like a, the, the protocol it's itself crazy. didn't reach the, uh, like it didn't get out of draft status until earlier this year. So I spent a lot of time mm. talking about earlier forms of the protocol yeah. when it was still a little rough uh, and then refining cool. it as the technology has improved. It's amazing, like that that you've been doing this for so long, developing it. And, I mean, <laughs> I, I always uh, it's one thing. I I mean, we did we've done one talk, and the amount yeah. of work we put in on such a minor, like our topic was very minor in comparison to like something like yours, really. Um, and it's it's I don't think it, people appreciate the time and effort. And uh, so, thank you for doing things like this. Yeah. 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 How receptive do do you think people are to to something like this? Do, are they like you know what? Yeah. Let me get on that. Oh my God. Or, or they're like, no, I'll get to it. Like, like, I'll get to it. I think we're starting to turn a corner on security topics because uh, the general challenge of security topics tend to revolve around trying to tell people in a good way. Yeah. Things that were the status quo or things you were doing, there are better ways and people don't like to be told they're doing something wrong. Uh, and like a few years ago, it was a hard sell to even get them onto conference programs. Like I had to talk to sure. the conference organizers and be like, no, like, you know, you should have some security <laughs> content in your software development talk. Yeah. Like yeah. we should, we should have something so that they can go and apply these things. And that's gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. And I've also started to see the attendance to talks start to increase. Cause for a while I could get mm -hmm. them onto conference programs, but it was hard, you know, like only 12 people came. I was like, no, no, don't put me in the big room. Put me in the small room for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then maybe in a couple of years it'll get better. And I'm starting to see more of a desire to put security first. And as a result, more people are starting to attend these kinds of lectures. Yeah, I think it just makes- uh, Makes sense. I, well, I was gonna <laughs> say, mostly it makes good business sense because, and the reason I say business sense is because there's dollars tied to the to these decisions, yeah. right? And and if, if if we have these flaws, these open uh, areas, like you said, like the, wh whom people are targeting, there there could be major ramifications here. Yeah. So for a lot of organizations, like like a major security bank can can be catastrophic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's All definitely case. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not putting yeah. putting somebody out of business for three days. It's by company. Yeah, yeah. See ya. I got all your technology. Out. Yeah. 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 Preventative versus being reactive. Right. Yeah, it, it's all about being yeah. proactive. Be proactive. Um, I, I imagine you have to sometimes beat that into people's heads uh, metaphorically. Not metaphorically. In a positive nice. way. In a positive way. Yeah. yeah. Just, just want yeah. a little, like, the thing is that 
there, there's diminishing returns very quickly on this. Mm, so I like, it's not, it's not even just like an ounce of perfection is a pound of cure. It's maybe a gram. So if I just get people to even think about it a little bit yeah, and just put a little bit of planning into it, even if they don't make any changes to software, if they just like, oh yeah, for PCI compliance, I need to do a penetration test. I should probably use this already existing opportunity as a way to test my defensive measures. Well said, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wonder how much people, yeah, think about it. Yeah, yeah, this is great. I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's something that I, I feel like a lot of companies think about it after they hit the problem. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully the yeah. problem wasn't too big of one. Yeah, yeah hopefully. You know, all of our customers' personal information was released. Oh, if only we'd implemented that. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the, for example, even Google, like. Many years ago, we responded to an incident, and that's why we started using the predecessor to web authentication in, inside. And it's made a huge difference. So yeah. events can happen, and it's important that we learn from them. Yeah, I'm really surprised in a positive way that it hasn't happened more with Google, because Google's so massive, has so much information from everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone has Gmail, like literally everyone on the planet probably has a Gmail account. And luckily, if nothing has happened, it's probably because they you know, care about this oh, preventative. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's been, I've been really fortunate to be able to start investigating security topics while part of Google yeah. because I get, I've had so many opportunities to collaborate with such like world-class uh, you know, security experts, which has been wonderful. What's it like being at DevFest this year? Oh, I love DevFest. Yeah. So I'll do several DevFests a year. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And it's really cool how, how each one tailors to the community so much and how the vibe mm -hmm. is different at each one. Mm -hmm. And this one's been a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, where, where are you actually from? Are you, you're not from Orlando, are you? I'm not from Orlando. I'm based yeah. in San Francisco. San Francisco. Okay, cool. Uh, how many days do you get to spend in uh, in Florida? In Florida. So there's uh, actually another conference I'm going to be speaking at next week. So I get to spend a whole nine days here. Oh, wow. I have, I have a few days in the middle of that. Oh, are, do you get to go see the mouse and all that? It's, it's going to happen, yeah. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> okay, cool. Have you been to Disney World before? I have, but it's been a long time. It's oh, been okay. like 15 years. Nice. Uh, so, it's an experience. Animal yeah. Kingdom is my favorite. Ooh, Which one? Kingdom? Animal, Animal Kingdom. Have it been yet? Yes, that's the one that has the Yeti ride, right? Ooh. Ooh. The oh, there's a roller coaster. Yeti what about? Yeah, yeah, that one's pretty like cool. What about? The little snowman is coming. If you're okay out. with uh, roller coasters, the roller coaster is really good. Cool. <laughs> you didn't hear me that. Well, no one so heard that. Was that. Was a secret. What, what about uh, Universal? <laughs> it has uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that sounds fun. I made it down there a couple years ago. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Did you do the both parks thing where you can go on the train? Yeah, yeah you I have to do that. This is a full Harry Potter experience was, at the time. It was, was really fun. It was also like the day after a hurricane blew through. Oh. So the park was empty. That, that was know. convenient. Oh. Yeah. We, we made well it the first done. day they reopened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually you can't walk anywhere through there. Harry Potter, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. It's yeah. just yeah. constantly packed. But yeah. So what are... What, what other kind of technology are you interested in? What other tech am I interested in? Yeah, what so, other stuff you play with? So I have a side project that I spent less time than I, I hope to on, uh, that I kind of do DevOps stuff for, called Project Panoptes. Oh, uh, how do you spell that? Panoptes, P-A-N-O-P-T-E-S. That's how I was going to spell it. Yeah, it's a backronym <laughs> that's a, a play on uh, Panopticon. Well, not, not Panopticon, but Panoptes, the mythical uh, creature with many, a thousand eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. It sounds like something mythical, okay. but I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Panopticon's the other bad thing named after it, which is like a prison land. Oh. We have nothing to do with prison <laughs> lands. <laughs> um, but it is an open source project uh -huh. where, uh, led by professional astronomers, where we um, uh, collaborate with educational institutions, like high schools, universities, and they build these like $5,000 robotic telescopes Ooh. that you can use for cool astrophotography, like taking pictures of planets, but we also pool all the data together from all of these geographically distributed telescopes to do a survey to look for planets around other stars. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's cool. really fun. Oh, what a time we live in. That's a really cool name for yeah, the project. Yeah, now that I know the yeah, project yeah, is, it's yeah, a really yeah, good yeah, name. Really it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well done, whoever named that. Yeah. So what have you found out there? So we're aliens. still really Alien <laughs> <Alien> TV? <laughs> Astronomy goes kind of at a slower pace. So the project's like nine years old now, and a large part of that time was just spent figuring out if this would actually work before we have a bunch of yeah. schools spend like thousands of dollars on hardware to, to join the project. And right now we're at the phase we are one of the verification partners for a different planet exploring telescope. 
Oh, okay. Um, which is good because you know you need multiple independent observations to know that that science thing is real and not just a little anomaly <laughs> in the science data. Thing is real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And once that project's done and we've really kind of proven the the network, then we'll probably start looking at different stars uh, and looking for planets so cool. around them. That makes sense. How did you get into that? Have you always been interested in that kind of stuff? I've always been a bit of an astronomy geek. Yeah. And doing developer relations for a long period of time, because I've been doing it for about 10 years now, we have to find ways to keep our tech skills relevant and sharp. Uh -huh. We actually have to find, you know, opportunities to go beyond the hello world and dig into all of the, the corner cases and rough stuff. So I needed something uh, since I've been in cloud computing for a while. So I just, you know, went back, I wanted, you know, my, my childhood dream of being an astronomer and just started asking astronomers like, hey, astronomers, like, you have telescopes and no <laughs> computers. I have computers and no telescopes. Can we work together? Let's put our peanut butter and chocolate together and make a Reese's, yeah. Exactly. And then after a lot of talking to astronomers, we kind of... I don't closed. know if you worked. You shut up. Oh, yeah, after a lot of conversations with astronomers, several people referred me back to this Panopolis project. And it's just been a great fit ever since. That's so cool. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah. What? What? If you could find something, what would be the thing that you'd be like, I knew it! Oh, relative, like for, for space stuff? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Panoptes can only, like there's a narrow band of things it can actually find. Okay, but what do you want to see? Oh. What do you want to see? What do you want to find? Oh, that's, that's. It is, isn't it? Yeah, that's a hard, there's there's some um, newer projects that are much more higher budget projects that are sure. able to start to see the atmospheric contents of planets. Oh, so, Jesus, that's amazing. Yeah, to start to use some, some tricks of uh, physics to like, infer what gases are in there oh yeah like by the color of the light you could tell exactly. by, by this color it's made up of this chemical compound exactly yeah. so um, i'm hopeful that you know at some time in the next 10 20 years uh we'll be able to find a planet that has gases that could only be made by life forms which would be really cool yeah. and we're starting to get pretty close to be able to do that yeah i saw something on the uh the googles uh, the other day that they're finding uh, large amounts of oxygen, oh, yeah, oxygen on Mars, Mars yeah. and they are kind of like, hey, that's weird. Yeah, isn't it's that coming gonna, and going. Yeah, and doesn't that kind of communicate yeah. possible life? Ooh. Yeah, that is, uh, there's also a lot of methane that often comes from biological sources that is still, we explained where some of it came from, but there's still a lot of unexplained methane on Mars. Yeah. So Mars is, could still totally be uh, an interesting candidate for like subterranean life forms. Yeah, there could definitely, I mean, we, we might not find people. like people that's like, hello, but like there could be like little fishy worm crab like things and that could be our first aliens. Dune? They could, I, I wasn't gonna say dune. I was more thinking of like crawfish, but sure, there could be the guys with the blue eyes. His name is a killing word. Sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That would be pretty amazing. Sting's still there. <laughs> Still there. Still <laughs> you got there? Yeah, yeah. What? Oh, we're done, dude. The dune. I, I've read, I couldn't get it through the second book. The uh, first book is good, and then the second uh, book yeah, got a little bit too political. They're both hard. What did, you, what did you think about yeah. the movie? Which the, one? Oh, man, there's been the, a lot the first of one, the one with um, uh, uh, the one guy from um, Patrick Stewart's in it. Patrick Stewart's in it, yeah. I can't remember the name. That one, it, it took me, there was a certain cut of it I found that was pretty good, but the original, the theatrical cut, I didn't really understand. Yeah. I had to actually read the book to, to fully yeah. understand or see some other different cuts of it. Dude. I forgot which cut They're it was. They're redoing it again, too. Yeah, they yeah. are. Why? Because it can be good. It, it could be done right. It could be good. This is why I've never seen it, so. Yeah. I have no... Like everything you're saying right now is just like over my head. Just, just the book, just read the book. Don't watch the movie. Well, I don't know. The, the first movie's pretty good. Uh, the books get really weird. Yeah, the books get yeah, really weird. Get farther in. It's like I don't know how many there are. Are you afraid of artificial yeah. intelligence? Am I afraid of artificial intelligence? Do you That's have awesome. any kind of? Uh, well, I, I know, but <laughs> generally, <laughs> but, I you know, deep. No, well, I'm just wondering, like, as as far as like you know, the singularity or or something like that. <laughs> does any of that scare you? Do you have any kind of apprehension? That that is a big. Well, you, she question. isn't scary. Or, or, she isn't security. <laughs> she isn't scary. Well, security, which from is scary. Security security. Yeah. From a human. From a human. From a human perspective, yeah. that's still a big, big, difficult question. I, I would say that you should approach this with a lot of caution. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of cases where things will appear to superficially work and then have very unexpected behavior in corner cases that we didn't anticipate. Yeah. 
and that can cause side effects. So we need to be even more careful than we've been previously for technology as we start to apply artificial intelligence to different problems. I like the way that Elon talked about how um, if we have some kind of issues, uh, normally where we have issues with like, he used that analogy, you've probably seen this too, where he talked about the seatbelts, where it took like years and years and years to put up rules about seatbelts, even though seatbelts killed people, they proved uh, not wearing a seatbelt rather would, would kill somebody. And if you wore a seatbelt, you were more uh, likely to survive an accident. And if we get to a point where we have uh, danger with uh, AI, it's going to take us a long time to put some kind of rules together where we won't have that time. Uh, it's going to be something like if, if something happens, then it's too late at that, at that point. Mm. Hot drama, Frederick, hot drama. Hot <laughs> drama. We went yeah. way off topic. Yeah. So Death Fest Florida. Death Fest yeah. Florida. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I just enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so how can people find out more about you? How can people find well, uh, out more Website, about uh, Twitter, all that? So yeah, taking a step back from social media in general. So I have a, I have a Twitter. If you might, you might be able to stumble upon it, but I don't tweet that much there anymore. Okay. Um, I'm all old school, like RSS feeds and blogs. So nice. I'm trying to get back into the blogging field. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the website I'm, I'm currently under constructioning my website. Um, okay, but nice. What is starting to appear there will be at gen dot run. Nice dot run. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Love that. Six right. letter domain name. So what a world we live at in. At gen. No gen, gen dot run. run. Gen Oh, yeah, the dot run TLD. It was the cheapest good. three little TLD with like a good Janet. I like that. Is there any reason why the run? It was the cheapest. Cheapest. cheapest <laughs> perfect. Okay. <laughs> Twelve dollars a year. I can afford this. Oh wow, yeah. that's it. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Are you going to start running so you can validate it? Or sadly, do you run? sadly, I cannot no. run. No. There'll okay. be some Flashy. kind of run theme in, inside yeah. there. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, Maybe yeah, running, you can software. Do running software. There you go. Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Really yeah. appreciate it, Jen. Thanks so much yeah. for the opportunity to come on. Yeah. Awesome. And thanks, everybody. We got a lot more coming up. Take care. See ya.